What's good people, back once again after yet another lengthy hiatus. Now given the times of my last video and the fact that a few things have changed since then, I was tempted to delete the original video and start this whole series again from scratch. But I decided against doing that because I think it's important to keep things as authentic as possible and the truth is I'm kind of in pretty much exactly the same position I was all the way back in January in terms of my weight, my physique and my body fat level. This is the end of the first week of the re-up revamps. I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Um, I still got quite a long way to go, obviously, but I'm very happy with it as a starting point. Before I get into my progress, what's changed, what I'm gonna be doing, etc., etc., here's my arm workout for my new training program. If you're after a good pump, definitely give this one a go. That is still too hot. Nothing quite like a good pump to start the day, eh? Now in terms of starting position and progress made this week, I got back from holiday last week where I was basically eating anything I wanted and drinking whatever I wanted. And while I didn't exactly train, I was very active and I averaged around about, I think, 12,000 steps a day. So I came back last week at 106.1 kilos. And to put that into some kind of context, the day before we flew out, I weighed in at 101.3 kilos. But my return weight would have been massively skewed by the fact that I would have been retaining a lot of water. So throughout that week, I would have been eating foods that were high in carbs and high in salt, which obviously leads to more water retention. And I weighed in probably about 12 hours after getting off the plane. So still not fully resettled back there. So that's in no way representative of the actual weight I gained on that holiday, but I definitely did gain some weight. In terms of progress this week though, I weighed in this morning at 103 kilos. So Without being able to fully know what my weight would have been without accounting for that additional water retention, I'm going to use 100 and, uh, the 106.1 kilo figure as my start weight for this. So that means I've lost 3.1 kilos this week, and I'll take that for now because it's an excellent start weight. Obviously, it's not really representative of what I would have actually lost this week, but it'll do. I don't expect to see those numbers every week, obviously, but I'll take it for now. And uh, physique-wise, I'm quite happy with how it's looking at the moment. Again, I've got to take a uh, video last week to know what my full starting physique would have been, but that would have been massively bloated and again, really skewed. I'm going to be doing a few things differently with this cut. So normally I would take my measurements every week. However, I'm not going to be doing that this time, particularly not at the start. I'm going to be focusing predominantly on the changes in my physique and my weight. So obviously your the scales aren't the be all and end all. They're not the metric to fully gauge your success by particularly when you're doing strength training because with fat loss and muscle gain those numbers can look very skewed but with my weight at the moment I do know that I have a lot to lose so I do fully expect to be losing some weight every week. So nutrition wise I've had to pull my fitness pad up for this because I will forget I'm going to be starting on 2480 calories and that's going to be consisting of the macros of 186 grams of protein, 279 grams of carbs, 69 grams of fat. In terms of my training, I'm going to be utilising a five-day bro split, which basically means I'm training a different muscle group each day. The order I'm going to be doing that in, at least plan to be doing that in, is legs, chest, back, shoulders, and arms. I may chop and change that as time goes on, we'll see, but I think that's a good balance of how to do it to stop muscles fatiguing, etc. Um, so far, the programme I've written myself is, I think, pretty good. It's going pretty well, but we'll see how it goes over the course of this whole cut period. 
Now I mentioned earlier a few things have changed since my last video back in January. Uh, at that time I was using the Morsia app for my training, I was taking part in their transformation challenge. I started off using one of the bodybuilding programs but in all honesty I didn't think it was that great. Uh, and it really made me fall out of love with that kind of style of training. Like the workouts, there was just far more volume on them than there needed to be, in my opinion. And if you were using the rest periods that they recommended, despite the app telling you the workout was, I think, 80 minutes, if you actually timed it properly, it would take you around two and a half hours plus, and that is just excessive, in my opinion. So because of that, I switched over to one of the powerlifting programs that they do. Excuse you and I did see some really good progress on that program. So my bench press one rep max went from 95 to 100 kilos. My squat went from 110 to 125 and I got my deadlift up from 140 to 160, which over an eight week period, I was really, really happy with. And that really lit a fire for me again when it came to my training, which was great. But because of the style of training and the way you have to eat around it, etc., etc. I didn't see any changes in my weight or physique and that for me is where I think I need to see, I would like to see, sorry, the most changes. So I decided to switch back to the kind of bodybuilding style of training that I'm doing again now. Another one of the changes I've made, and you may have clocked this if you uh, watched the workout video before this and you've seen any of my other videos in the past, but I've changed my gym as well. I used to go to a pure gym that was kind of near me, and I say near because it was a 20 minute drive away, but I've moved now to a local independent gym that's five minutes down the road. This has been a huge boost for me for a number of reasons. Firstly, being only five minutes down the road means that because I predominantly work from home, I can go and train on my lunch break if I want to because I very deliberately write my training programs and plans so that I am only training for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes, five minutes there and back. I've still got five minutes within my hour, which gives me time to come back, quickly jump in the shower if I need to, and then get back to work. Also, I now spend as much time in a week driving to the gym as I was trained for driving for one session, and with fuel prices where they are at the moment, that has been a huge boost. Secondly, because it's a commercial gym, it's very rarely too busy to train, if you know what I mean. So, you know when you go into a gym and there's like two squat racks with 15 people fighting for it, or one lap pull down and everyone wants to be using it at the same time, I don't have that issue anymore. So my old gym was in a very busy city centre and it was walking distance from a college, a university, my old sixth form and countless offices so it was always swarmed but after 7.30 in the morning which meant I had a very limited window in which I was happy and comfortable to go and train and I don't have that anymore because my new gym is in the middle of a quiet industrial estate in a very quiet town and it's lovely. But the most important thing for me is the kind of gym it is and the type of clientele it attracts. So this new gym feels a lot more like a bodybuilding gym for me and I feel it's got a much better vibe for people who want to take their training really seriously. So <clears throat> on the occasion that I do have to wait for a piece of equipment now, it's some, so the person who's on it is always working out, hitting their sets with maximum intensity and taking a reasonable rest period in between. They're not flapping about, half repping, ego lifting, and spending 10 minutes on their phone playing Clash of Clans between every set, which I saw far too often at Pure Gym. I'm a big believer that the environment you're in when you're training and the people you're surrounded by can really impact your training, the intensity, and therefore the effectiveness. You're not gonna be working as hard if you're surrounded by people who are sitting there looking at their phones and twiddling their thumbs in between sets, as you are gonna be if you're surrounded by people who are dialed in and given everything 110%. But anyway, I think I've rambled on for long enough, so I'm gonna love you and leave you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.